yeah, I, you know, I've seen a change in you. I've seen the announcements mm -hmm. on social media. So I'm happy that you're coming into more of who you are. And I, I want to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, some, if we can. Oh, absolutely. We can talk about anything. Yeah. Because I, uh, you know, I've seen you say on social media, you have been going in and out of closets for most of your life. And I'm curious about that. Now, dating back to, I'm talking like late 90s when I first got into this music and everything in teenage hardcore knitting circles, there, you would be a topic of discussion. Like, uh, is he gay? Yeah. Is he not gay? <laughs> uh, what's going on? And even in more recent times, I've spoken to people and they've asked, they've asked me, like, did you ask him? Do you know? Do you know what's going mm -hmm. on? And I say, no, like we, we, we didn't talk about that particular subject right. at that time. But, but now we are. I'm curious. Yeah, here we are. Here we are. But I'm curious about your journey and kind of how you came to where you are now, because uh, yeah. I think... I think talking about it and I think people hearing about it would help them if they're going through the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I love talking about it because I feel like it, it gets very confusing. It's difficult. And when other people can hear you telling your story, it makes their story just a little bit easier. Um, but it's funny because Becky, who also sings in the Iron Roses, was saying the same thing about like mid to late nineties, like hardcore circles and like message boards and stuff, always having those questions. And, yeah. um, and, and it's funny because I probably came out about four times, like, cause I didn't know what the hell was going on. I feel like at the time, obviously people were trans, people were non-binary, people were pansexual, bisexual, whatever, but the terms weren't as known, at least not right. to me. You know what I mean? So it's hard for me to realize what the fuck was going on because it was like, it was like, am I gay? Am I straight? Am I this? Am I that? I'm really confused about like my gender and who the hell I am. And so it came out in these ways where like one second I'm like, I'm gay. No, wait a minute. I'm straight. No, I'm bi. No, fuck. What's the term for this craziness? You know, like, <laughs> and, and so it was very frustrating over the years to go in and out of closets like that. And then to finally get to a place where at least I'm on my way, you know, cause I feel like you, you never truly land. There's always a journey. Everything's fluid. Everything changes uh, until it doesn't, you know? And, um, yeah. and so I feel like I'm in that moving stage in that fluid stage where I'm still trying to figure it out a little bit, but that at least there are terms and there are are ways of understanding it that I can explain it to other people and then they can go, oh, okay, I've heard that before. I know what that is, you know, um, instead of people just looking at you like you're insane, you know? So that journey has been going on for decades and trying to figure that out. And, you know, being raised in the church and all that kind of stuff, it didn't make it much easier, you know, because um, no matter what it was, no matter what I was feeling, it was obviously sinful and wrong um, and unnatural and horrible and, you know, whatever. So trying to figure that out with that lingering guilt of that upbringing was very difficult. And now getting to the point where I'm just now at 51 going, OK, I sort of get it. I'm going to see where this journey takes me um, has been shocking. <laughs> um, in a good way to me, in a good way to some of my close friends, in a very bad way to other people who, um, you know, just don't get it, don't want to get it. And it just fine. You know, I've, um, I've fortunately gotten to the place where I don't have a lot of time left to deal with this. You know, I'm, right. I'm just going to start being me and taking that journey as I take it. And it's going to get weirder and wilder and crazier and more wonderful and more happy. And I'm just going to go there. And if everybody wants to jump off, jump off. It's not your train ride. How have things changed for you um, since uh, discovering more about yourself? I think in many ways, the only thing that's changed for me is the amount of time I spend on the couch in deep depression. And so we're hoping it's less. Oh, now. yeah, less. Sorry. No, I wasn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's much less. Okay, now. good. Yeah. So good. so the, yeah, I should have been more specific there. Um, it has it has made me 
much happier. And it's funny because like life is never like, oh, depression's over and I'm fine. But when you are in a better place mentally, emotionally with who you are, it makes those low low times so much easier to get through. Like I don't find myself just wiped out for like a whole week. It might be for a day, you know, it might be for a few hours, but like overall I'm happy, you know, because I'm on the journey that I want to be on as opposed to someone else's journey that they think I should be on. So it makes it much easier. How did you feel restrained before? You mentioned someone else's journey. Is it just society? Is it family? Is it all of that? All of the above. I think that, you know, number one, I had to get through something that I don't remember if I talked about it on this show before, but I have in the past five years talked about the sexual abuse that I dealt with in the church. And um, there was a lot of confusion in that too. In I, I had to get through that and get to a place where I could forgive myself and heal myself um, before I could get to this part. You know what I mean? It's been such a crazy, wild journey getting through all these different uh, traumatic experiences and things going on. Um, you know, recently I um, I did a post where I burnt a picture, an old picture of me at thirteen. Um, because I was hanging on to it. I was hanging on to this vision of this 13 year old who had been horribly wounded in the church, who had been um, abused um, and taken advantage of. And it's funny because I'm talking about it now. And normally by now I'd be in tears talking about this, but I'm not because I got to this point where I was trying to save that kid. You know what I mean? Like it was years and years and years of trying to save this child inside me. And finally, I got to a point where I had to let him go. And I had to realize that I was taking up so much time in my present and and risking my future by dealing with this thing in the past that I needed to get through to move forward. Um, so, and that's where I am now. I, I burnt that picture and I did a, a thing of it online, which is sort of like a little ritual you go through, you know what I mean? To go, that's it, you know? Yes. Um, and, and that was literally it. It just, it doesn't come up in my head anymore. It's not a thing that I deal with. It was, I mean, obviously a thing I dealt with all my life until probably about five or six years ago when I started going, I need to deal with this. And it was a rough road for like five, six years until now. And now that I've gotten into becoming who I am and I've gotten through, you know, really going through what had happened, um, I feel great. 